Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Very Small Pilots Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Long. With me, as always, my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, gunner, navigator, orator, and podcasting associate, Jacob Gloth. How are you doing today, Jacob? I'm doing all right, Charles. Uh, you know, it's it's a day, like all days. Like all and days. on this one, we're going to give you a beautiful TV show, as we do sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. Nope. Last sometimes. week's wasn't beautiful. It was quite quite horrific i would say yep dour even what was last week's last one was um death's many face oh yeah dog face dog face dr dog face hey there could be a dog face in this one and by dog face i mean a dog with a face oh my god or most dogs like have faces an ugly person and you're like oh she he's got a dog's face you know yeah maybe they got like a pug face you know but not really. They just are human that also has a very kind of flat, smushed face, you know? Yeah, we knew somebody The show like would be that. animated so you could do that, right? Yeah, well, we knew somebody who had one of those squished, flat faces. You're talking about In Joe? high school. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about <laughs> Joe. I just you know who I'm to, talking about. to say he has this flat face. I, I don't actually no. know who you're talking about. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, are you willing to bleep the name of the person I'm going yeah. to say? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Ah, Joe McCarthy. Riley, no- yeah, yeah Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had a big fat dog face. Dip a big fat fl- face. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, now that I'm, I've said I'm gonna it. Bleep, wait, the name you said, but leave mine in. And so. Yeah, of course. That's fine. Well, actually, you know, I'll probably I'll bleep the last name. Of, well, obviously they're the same name, but I only bleeped you saying it, not mine. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> okay. Because. It's okay when I say it, but not you, because it's mean when you say it. Yeah, it is mean when I say it. I, I have a I have a reputation to uphold as a yep. nice guy, but you're like everyone knows you're just heartless. So yep, I'm, I'm Mr. House. Or yeah, Tommy Shelby or it, the Ryan Gosling. Tony Soprano, Ryan Gosling in Drive. You're Harvey every Specter in, yep. in in Suits. All those it's so me characters. That's me in real life, just like yeah. That. Bat, yeah. you're, you're, you're Sigma male I Batman. I thought it was weird Brian when they said. released Blade Runner 2049. I was like, wow, this is, must be plagiarism because on the screen it was just literally me. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a, videos of you getting punched in the face for real by Harrison Ford. That is a dream of mine. Did you Harrison know that Ford actually happened? Punch, yep. Yeah. We got this punched in the face. That's, yeah. uh, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I bet punched it in the would... face by an elderly Harrison Ford. It would still hurt like a motherfucker, I bet. He's Probably. still in good shape. He's like 80-something. He's still like lifting weights and stuff, flying airplanes, crashing them, still yeah. living through it somehow. Still Indiana Jonesing. Yeah. You know? Who do you think holds the record for most plane crashes survived? Because I have to imagine Harrison Ford is definitely on the leaderboard, if not at the top. Oh, how many has he done? Do you know? I don't know, but he's like... Every couple of years, you read a, a story in the news, like Harrison Ford was flying his, you know, 1950s style plane over the Colorado, you know, woods, and he, uh, he crashed and, and snapped his leg in half again. But he's fine. How many All right. plane crashes? Rano Slok was a Croatian man who was known for his frequent brushes with death. He's described as the world's unluckiest and luckiest man. Um, I don't have a number here. That was kind of what we wanted, right? A number. Uh, yeah. Uh, three crashes and one incident is how many Harrison Ford has been in. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. It's it's less than I thought, but it's still more than a human being should have lived through. <laughs> oh, he crashed on a golf course in 2015. Oh, no. Freno Salak does not have... He just has the most brushes with death. That at least recorded oh. at least it's okay, not the plane yeah. crashes though his one plane crash um during his first and only plane ride he was blown out of malfunctioning plane door and landed in a haystack the plane crash killing 19 people jesus he, christ he, landed, he survived getting knocked out of a plane landing in a haystack i thought that was just in video games and movies yeah like, it was he, like he this assassin's creed whoa is was he unconscious because people survive shit like that when they're unconscious Versus, you know how people, like, if, you, if you're if you in a tornado and you're hey. unconscious, you're, like, 80% more likely to survive than if you're conscious? Yeah. 
That's true. Because your your body goes all stiff when you're conscious because you're freaking out. But when you're unconscious, it's just flopping around and you're allowed to... You, you let your body just kind of do what it wants to do. And that lets you live through stuff more. So is the TV show you're going to pitch have anything to do with plane crashes or unlucky... No, uh, I don't know how we got into this. Hungarian uh, Ernest Hemingway also survived two plane crashes. Goddamn. Look at that. That he couldn't survive his alcoholism. Uh, Vesna Volovic, Vol- Volovic, Serbian lady, um, has, uh, she's a flight attendant. She holds the mm-hmm. Guinness World Record for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. 33,000 feet, six miles. Jesus Christ. That's how high that, that is. That is a or if you're very high person. A loser, it's 10,000 meters. Ugh, gross. Meters, yuck. That is so six high. Six miles high, yeah. I mean, that's how do you so survive f- that? That's like that one episode of of uh of King of the Hill where Hank convinced Peggy to to go you know skydiving with him and he loves it and she jumps at the plane and uh her parachute doesn't work and she lands in a big pile of of mud right she lands in like a bog and snaps all of the bones in her body <laughs> and he feels really bad about it that's kind of what that man she get kicked out of the plane or she just like trip and fall um a bomb exploded and she was sent out of the plane there was a bomb on board the plane jesus she got flown off the plane knocked so out. was everyone else on the plane dead the explosion happened in the baggage department caused the plane to break apart over this czechoslovakian village she was the only survivor of the 28 passengers and crew she was discovered by a villager named Bruno Hawk, who heard her screaming amidst the wreckage. Wreckage. Oh, wow. Good for her. That Hawk she lived. was fortunately a medic during World War II and was able to keep her alive. Fuck me. This lady is so lucky at being unlucky. She was able to survive. Oh my god. No way. This is. I, I didn't know Indiana Jones was real. Uh, she was able to survive because she was trapped inside of a food cart. Oh my god! Holy shit! This, the fuck whoever you wrote this TV show about. Like this is the new main character of the TV show. Uh, here's the thing. You'd think she, you know, was in a food cart, right? In Indiana Jones style, lands on the ground, <laughs> bleeding a lot, yeah. saved by the medic. You'd think, well, surely, right? She would a never fly again, and b I would wouldn't. have injuries that last for the rest of her life. Yeah, probably. Not only does she still work as, like, she stayed working as a flight attendant, but she um, didn't have any, like, long-term injuries. Fuck she me, was temporarily Jesus paralyzed, Christ. but she recovered, and she has no memory of the uh, incident and wanted to keep working as a flight attendant, but the airline gave her a desk job because they, would, they didn't I know. Was, yeah, no, I, if she was my flight attendant, I would not be happy. I would be terrified out of my mind. I... I think I'd be happier because I think, all right, she knows what to do if shit goes down. Yeah. I'll follow her if something's going to happen. I'll yeah. Make- I'll hold on to her. I'll make sure my blood pressure is low. Yeah. You know? Lightning doesn't strike twice. It'll probably be fine. Let's let's get on to the reason why we're here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's good because I, you know, this, I don't really have a ton to talk about this week with the pitch. Um, that's what you said last time. Well, that's, see, this is definitely true because I didn't read a lot of shit. Um, so, you know, well, there's a lot of flexibility and room with this pitch, though. So it's nice to, you know, we can come up with stuff on the fly. It's not too hard because yeah. it's a it's a kid's show. Oh, we haven't done a kid's show in a little bit. So I thought that would be a, fun. In a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So this show is called Bite Sized. I'm not I'm not totally, you know, clinging to the title. I like it, but it's it, it's very, mm-hmm. you know, um, I could see there being toys and stuff called. Yeah. Like, bite Sized action yeah. figures. And then um, kids choke to death. Yeah, they they, they swallow. Well, maybe we make them edible because then they're food, you know. That would be good. They that's, would go so that's bad. That's a good way to get around that. Yeah. Well, you but, make them out of like uh, something doesn't go bad. Like the yeah, candy like, canes go bad. No, we make them out of candy canes. Okay, fair enough. Or or we make them out of something that's technically edible, but it doesn't like it doesn't taste of anything. You know, yeah. we could do that. So like it's like water. even if a kid does swallow this, it'll just like. <laughs> you know dissolve in their throat and they won't choke to death and that'd be good yeah um so uh 
bite size. A group of five kids have been shrunk and are living in their backyard. That's the, the setting. Ah, uh, honey, so, I shrunk the children. Essentially, that's that's the idea. Except the whole show is th they're shrunk. You know, ah, well, yeah. it's not a movie. You know, it doesn't end with with Harold you know, Ramis. The first episode, they're back to normal selves. They're they're gonna be shrunk for a little bit because mm -hmm. it's the show. Yeah. We have first we have Toby. Toby is kind of like uh, the Kenny if this was South Park. He because okay. uh, he kind of has that issue where he can't speak really, um, and that's because Toby has braces, and so every time he tries to speak, it's just everything slurred like I'm, you know. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. It's all messy, um, and uh, one another kid is Harrison is the only one that can understand him. Uh, it's kind of sort of like a Han Chewbacca relationship. Except mm -hmm. only Han in this in this stance can understand Chewbacca, so it's like you know we're we're the uh, everyone else is like the audience where we don't understand anything that Toby says, but Harrison does. Um, yeah, Harrison's on it. Toby, he's uh he's brave but pretty stupid, and he's always getting lost and stuck. That's his you know he's uh, if they're they're on an adventure somewhere through the backyard. Mm -hmm. Toby is part of it, and then not for the. For the you whole know, of the thing, because he found, episode. like, a chewed-up piece of bubble gum that somebody spit into the backyard, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> he goes up, and he, like, tries to take some, but then it's, like, it sticks him, and then he gets yeah, stuck inside stuck. of it. And then, you know, he's the subplot where, like, an ant tr comes and, like, picks up the bubble gum and takes it back to the ant colony, yes, and he yeah. becomes, you know, king of the ants and their warrior god. And then mm -hmm. at the end and of the episode, leads them it into a massive war with, uh, with the, the ant eaters or like the crickets, some, some some ant predator that we could use. I guess there wouldn't be ant eaters in this backyard. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. And if uh, there were, they would be fucking huge. Yeah, they would be huge. Uh, maybe the spiders or something. The ants are yeah. playing with spiders, and they all get slaughtered. And he's like, you know, like barely kills the spider, but his whole like ant family is dead. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, and he's mourning, and that's when his friends find him and go, hey, Toby, what's going on? And he's just he's like, like, oh, sorry, I was playing with my friends. Let's go. Yeah. And he goes, and it's like, well, we'll never think about that. Maybe again. Harrison's not there at that point, so he explains, but no one can understand him. We're like, yeah, okay, let's go. Like, okay. God, that's fun. Toby, and they, yeah. he leaves behind one ant larva as a seedling for another episode. Yeah. When the ants come back and they're like, you were our god, but you abandoned yeah. us. Or they, you know, a deus ex machina come in and save them. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And and at the end of the show, when they all get to normal size, Toby's like, no, I won't. I want to, well, first let normal size me so I can go to an orthodontist and get these braces off. And then uh, shrink me down again. And then I'll go be one with the, the ants. I will be their king. God, that'd be cool if uh, we have this, like, build-up over time. You know what I mean? Like, it starts mm -hmm. off as he's, like, you know, living with an ant family. And then another episode, he's become the ant king. And then after, you know, there's only that one larva left, and they come in deus ex machina style mm -hmm. uh, to save everyone. He's, like, the ant god because they, like, you know, he remembers, they remember him as the one that, like, saved them from the spider. You yeah. Know? And at the end, he's, like, the... I don't know what's above God, but he's, you know, tall again and big, so he still, he protects the ants. He's got but, an ant and he's got, in his room. Yeah, he's got an ant farm in his room, and he's, like, got a special connection with one of the ants. And, he, and, and then he grows up to become thing. Scott Lang. He's, he's yeah, Ant-Man. He's Ant-Man now. He's Hank Pym. Anyways, uh, so that's just one character. Then we have Isla. That's, Isla is a know-it-all. Um, you know, she's probably got big glasses. She, you know, thinks she knows everything. She's a smart kid at school. Mm -hmm. Um doesn't really know everything but you know thinks she does uh yeah very well, serious and and has to be in charge she's one of those kids like she has to be the one that's doing making the decisions the even if they're the wrong decisions kid. yeah yeah uh next we got and harrison harrison mm -hmm. is obviously the only one that can understand toby as i said earlier um he's toby's best friend and uh for Harrison, everything's a game, you know? He doesn't take anything seriously. He's the opposite of Isla. Mm-hmm. Then we've got Lily. Lily's a bug girl. Um, Ooh. Really into bugs. Likes to collect them. Makes friends with bugs, so... 
She's like a horse girl, but for bugs. Yeah, you know there's bug kids, kids that like yeah. bugs a lot. She's one yeah, of those kids. Freaks. Yeah. She's she, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's her backyard. Um, okay. That explains which is why, why there's, there's so many different be some, kinds. Yeah, but there's been a lot of bugs. Yeah. Uh, uh, spiders. Might, maybe and some, ants you know, crazy stuff too, you know. I don't, I don't yeah. Um Oh, I I lost my Tibetan, you know, hissing beetle. Uh, collection last last month. I guess they got out and went to the backyard. And she'd be like, oh, don't worry. It's a really small thing, really tiny. It's got this little mouth. It won't be a problem. And then we see it in front of her. It's like this, like, it's like a it's like a raptor, you know? It's like screaming yeah. in the air like in Jurassic Park. And it's got this Enormous massive horrifying. mouth like a T-Rex or something. Yeah. And it's just all be, running. That'd be great. Like, we have like a, like a Jurassic Park, like, T-Rex chase. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's one and of it's those, like, in Spongebob, where it's all, like, the animated style, and then they do a zoom-in close-up on the on the bug, and it's, like, yeah. super hyper-realistic and freaky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like and they're that. like, ah, let's run away. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking what I'm thinking. Toby trips and falls down a slide and yeah, ends up somewhere completely else. Uh... Then we have Chet. Chet's our last character. Chet is, uh, he's the sports kid. Um, mm -hmm. He's uh, really good at, you know, everything involving a ball. Basketball, baseball, soccer ball, you know, all that stuff. Javelin, uh, ball. He's like a jock, yeah. but instead of being, you know, sort of a dick, he's super nice because he's a kid still. Yeah. You know, Chet, Chet's going to be an asshole when he gets older, but he's super nice Of now. course, yeah. It's just like me. Yep, I was a nice child. Like you. Yeah, Real you piece of shit, man. That too. Yeah. Charlie, amazing at everything. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, Toby, Isla, Harrison, Lily, Chet. Those are our five characters. Our, our, our bite-sized kids who, in the pilot, um, they're, they're just they're normal kids, you know? They just finished school. They go into Lily's house to play. Um, they're probably like, let's say, eight, maybe. Yeah. Maybe seven, you know? Di like, certainly in the kid range. Not even preteen. They're children. Definitely 100% children. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're in, you know, elementary school. Too young mm -hmm. to realize that Chet's too cool for them, shouldn't be friends with them, you know? <laughs> yeah, too too young to realize too how cool. weird being a bug, a bug girl is. Yeah, too, you know? too yeah. They're, 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 you know, they're young. They're not, you know, there's no social cliques yet. They're just, yeah. you know, they all live in the same neighborhood, so clearly they should all play together. Mm -hmm. um, so, pilot, after school, the kids are playing loudly in the backyard, and their neighbor, Dr. Heinz Bugle, is getting annoyed. He's working on something in his lab, in his house. He's like kind of like a Dr. Doofenshmirtz sort of guy, you know, like very scrawny, sort of a weird-shaped face and head. Mm -hmm. um, kind of got like a squawky voice, very annoyed by these kids you know yeah meddling next door we'll cast dan poffenmeyer to play him i don't know who that is but yeah that's the voice of of dr doofenshmirtz okay so and the why, creator why do you know the voice of Dof <laughs> dr because he created uh phineas and ferb and he's popular on on tiktok i'm i'm oh, hip i, I didn't know, know the you kids. were a tiktoker charlie i don't even have tiktok but like it's i said earlier i use youtube lover. shorts that's whatever man it's <laughs> long lived <laughs> The, the 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 Chinese Communist Party. We get it. You yeah. Try. Anyway, you, you uh, said it. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you know, Doctor Heinz Bugle, great name by the way. You know, he's mm -hmm. getting annoyed, and the kids are playing louder and louder. He tells them to shut up, and they're like, you know, ah, but ah, but ah, but we're kids. Who cares? Pop it up, but da, ba, ba, and he's like, all right, ba, 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 ba. I'm gonna get you, kids. You, you, you meddling Maybe he's kids. got. It's, it's like. Uh, like a Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. And Maybe he's got like a. You know how old people back in the day they had like those reverse bugle things where it was like a big horn, but it was for them to hear. You know. You know what yeah. I'm talking about. Maybe he's got one of those, but it's always pointed directly at her backyard because he he just loves being pissed off by these kids, and he's you know everything <laughs> in this house funny, is right? bugle. Yeah. Yeah. Like he Literally. couldn't hear it, but when he, he he hates the idea that he could hear it. Mm -hmm. that, that if he, he can if he had it. better hearing, he could mm -hmm. hear it, and it would annoy him. So he's going to make sure he can hear it, so it does annoy him. And everything in his house is bugle shaped. You know, he eat he only eats bugles. 
the snack, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe he's got like really sharp fingernails, out, and like we only see him in silhouette or like from far away. And then like at one point he gets up close, and they're like, Ugh, he's got such gross long fingernails, and they just eats him. You know, because that's what a, their bugles on his fingertips. That's what you used to do with those. Okay, that's those a little snacks, much, right? but uh, yeah, the the bugle thing's good. <laughs> um, the the snack. I, is yeah. that where you were going? Okay. Yeah, that's um, the the snack. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, he he uh, is annoyed. So he obviously, you know, has his right as a, a landowner, and he shrinks yeah. the kids because they were annoying. That makes sense, right? Yeah, anyway, of course. So he shrinks the kids because they're being too loud, and, um, you know, they fall through the air like, ah, you know, because they got shrunk, you know, because instead mm -hmm. of, you know, shrinking them down to their foot, you know, it shrinks them down to, like, their head or something, and so they're falling a huge distance. Yeah. But they, you know, they oh. land on a big leaf. It's very comical, and they get flicked over into another leaf and falling, tumbling down. Maybe uh, they're in a treehouse, right, that's in the backyard, and he oh. shrinks the treehouse and everything in it. So the treehouse, like it's like a, a Wizard of Oz situation, when ah. the when the house falls in the tornado, and it's like ah, oh, and they're all like falling and shrinking, and then the house lands on the ground and they're stuck down there, and that's kind of like their base of operations, you know? Oh, I see. And they like yes, build they got like this a... little little treehouse that's now just a house because it fell out of the tree. Mm-hmm. I like it. And they build like lee they put like leave and stick structures up on it and make it into like a Robinson Crusoe thing, but it's it's super small. You really liked saying Robinson Crusoe in our last eight episodes. Yeah. It's Who a, doesn't like Robinson Crusoe? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's like you recently learned that that was a good phrase to use. I didn't. I, I've known that <laughs> phrase for years. I'm just what being are you talking mean. about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I do the same thing. Um, I've, I've never read a book in my life. Read a book, yeah. I think there's like six episodes where I use the same phrase because I learned it like a day before in a book. <laughs> yeah, you didn't notice though, so it's okay. I don't know what you're talking about. You have no idea what you're talking about. Anyway, so you know they're they're small now. That's crazy. Um, they got the little treehouse base. Mm -hmm. It's like you know small, um, but uh, they're like by an ant hill. And um, they have to like you know like you know, maybe they fall out of the house uh, like some of them fall out of the house some of them are still in but like some of them fall into the ant hill and mm -hmm. have to like scrounge their way out. Um, Isla and Harry are arguing. Uh, Chet's fucking slaying ants. Lily's trying to be friends with ants. Like they're all separated. You know they're not together besides yeah. Isla and uh, uh, Harry, uh, who are you know stuck together so they can argue. Um, Toby, so meanwhile, gets lost. Um, he's still up in the tree, shrunken. And he's yeah, maybe he's in the he's in the treehouse, and he's like, oh yeah, maybe he's way up in the tree. That'd be good. Yeah, and he's got to like figure out a way to get down, and he's like, oh, every, you know, maybe he finds like a piece of spider silk, and he uses that to rappel down, and then it snaps, and he, you know, he can do the comical. He lands on a leaf, and then the leaf flips him back, and he smacks into the tree, and he bounces off, and a stick yeah. breaks underneath him. You know, classic and somehow, Looney Tunes stuff. all this falling and everything, he lands exactly where he was before at the top of the tree. Exactly. He's like, gosh yeah. darn God it. Damn. This is a kid's show. Can't say God damn it. Gosh, God damn darn it, it, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> he <laughs> <laughs> kid. You know, he says say it with... that in the, in the subtitles. Uh, yeah, the adult only subtitles. We'll have a separate edition that's just the adult only subtitles. There you go. So we can hear him. Um, but maybe he, I don't know, maybe he f builds a glider out of a leaf and that's how he gets down and he's like flying through the air. Yeah, and he can come in at the last second and save everyone like like Han Solo, you know. Yeah, except it's one of those save like saves everyone but they don't really realize mm -hmm. that he saved them. Like there was a bigger threat coming and they didn't realize it and he takes out the bigger threat. Yeah. Um, and then everyone's like, God yeah. darn it, Tony, where have you, Toby, where have you been this whole time? You're so lazy and stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, Harrison's I skipped like, over a piece of description, I just realized. Oh, um, what we, is we were supposed to, okay, so they can land, you know, with the house, right? They get out of the house, they're like, whoa, we're small and stuff, this is crazy. 
um, and then they see a spider, right? A big spider, and they spiders are kind of the big enemies in this yeah. sp small world. Um, and so they have to run, and they run into the ant hill and get separated. That's that's how that happens. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Toby being still in the tree, though. Yeah, of course. And maybe at the end they get out of the ant hill, and the spiders, you know, it sees them. It's coming over, and Toby, uh, you know, flies down with his makeshift glider and uh like you know jumps off and it crashes into the spider maybe it's got like a stick on the front this you know it just pierces and kills the spider or yeah. makes it go away you know it yeah it makes it go away kills it stabs it decapitates it but it's maybe he maybe just makes it go away because it's a kid show yeah yeah uh maybe chet isn't killing the ants either yeah i was gonna say maybe he's like swatting them away with a you know a broken piece of leaf or something you know yeah He's like, I'm gonna catch one. I want it to be my friend. Episode my friend. two. Um, they find an old Game Boy in the backyard. Um, so, and you know, they're kids. Um, mm -hmm. Chet and Toby uh, want to play Pokemon, and they start playing. And so it's, you know, it's a Game Boy, so they're like, and they're small, so they're like jumping on the buttons, you know, like going around mm -hmm. to different buttons, jumping on them so they can play. And it kind of yeah. works, because Pokemon's not a very intensive game, you know? It's not like you gotta make a lot of quick decisions. Yeah. Um, so maybe Chet's up by, like, the screen, and Toby's at the buttons, going to each one, pressing him. Uh -huh. um, so while that's happening, um, Lily uh, is going back into the ant cave, and she's cultivating ant eggs, because she's a bug person, you know? She, mm -hmm. like, you know... She's like, I want to go back to see the ants. And, like, she goes in, she finds ant eggs. She's like, this is so cool. Oh, my God. Um, They're my friends. And then one of the eggs hatches. And it's like, hello, baby. And he p and she picks it up and puts it on her shoulder like a parrot. Harry, like, you know, wants to enjoy the, the small life they have, you know. And Lily is like, uh, we need to get back. We need to, you know, get our tell our parents or tell Lily's parents. Uh, mm -hmm. Isla's saying that, sorry. Uh, I think I yeah. said Lily. Um and so, you know, that, that's going Isla. on. Toby uh, and Chet, you know, they're they're playing Pokemon, but the batteries run out. And Chet's like, oh, damn, what are we going to do? And and uh, he's like, well, I think actually there's, like, batteries in the sandbox that I dropped, dropped before, um, you know, or like the charging cords there, and we could grab mm -hmm. that. And so Toby is the one who's like, oh, yeah, I'll grab it. And Chet doesn't really understand what he says, but he's like, okay. This is this. But, like, as, as Toby, you know, runs away to go get it, Chet's like, yeah, but that would be a good idea because of all the sand mites in there. Yeah. And then we're like, sand oh, no. And so Toby goes to the sandbox looking for the power cord. Uh, Lily's still working on those ant eggs. You mm -hmm. know, she's starting to, they, like, they open up and, she, like, uh, and the ants come out. And she's like, oh, this is so cool, ants. Um, and, like, you know, they're all, like, nuzzling up. They, like, think she's the queen. Mm -hmm. uh, and Isla and uh, Harrison realize that Toby's gone. They're like, oh, we got we to go look for him. We think he's in the sandbox. So Chet, Isla, uh, and Toby, or not Toby, uh, Harrison, are all going to the sandbox because they got to find Toby. Yeah. Um, and they and get there, and they find him, like, stuck in, like, uh, like, a soda drink. You know, he's inside the oh. straw. I thought and it was going to be uh, Toby, like, on his journey, he, like, makes a makeshift, like, satchel bag out of, uh, out of leaves, and he's, like, collecting really small bugs and using them to fight other bugs. And he's, oh like, my god, like Pokemon? That would like be awesome, Pokemon. we should do that instead, it's way better. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. that's what I thought you were building up, that's why I thought they were playing that's Pokemon. That's way better. So he's, like, playing real-life Pokemon with small bugs. Yeah. Uh, but he gets to, like, the sandbox, which is, like, the equivalent of, like, the hardest region in Pokemon, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where these big-ass sand mites are. And his Pokemon get wrecked, right? And then he has yeah. to... He goes to, like, this soda that's on the ground. He hops in, like... It's like a... It's like a cup, you know? And he hops into the straw. And yeah. he's, like, hiding in there from the sand mites that are outside, maybe sucking on the, the soda molecules for, you know... For nutrients. Drink, because it's hot outside. Yeah. And, uh... Because I imagine if you're small and it's, it's, you know, the sun's up, the sand is probably really hot. And so yeah. he oh, probably yeah. had to deal with that, you know. And so, the, you know, the, his friends come and they see the sand mites and they're all like, oh, my God, we're going to die. We're all hiding in the straw now. Like, what are we going to do? 
Um, and that's when Lily comes in with her ant army and saves the day because she's been cultivating these ants. And so it's yeah. like, it's like you know, she wanted to play Pokemon earlier, maybe, mm-hmm. and like they wouldn't let her because they're like, oh, we only really need two people. I mean, you could help with the buttons, but you know, it, yeah, it's not necessary. Maybe it's not next your turn. Time. Maybe next time, mm-hmm. yeah. And she's like, oh, I, I want to play. And so she goes on her ant journey, and she's the savior in the end with her stronger ant Pokemon than the yeah. sand mites. And then they get the cable. They finally get the cable back to the thing, and they're like, all right, we have the cable. We can play more Pokemon. Where do we plug it in? Oh, shit. Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> they realize yeah. this entire thing has been for nothing because there's no outlets. In mm-hmm. the backyard. Damn. Darn. The ants probably carried the cable back too. Which mm-hmm. was like, you know, because uh, maybe I, they probably got it and they're like, how the hell are we? Maybe Toby got there originally before the sand lights showed up, but he like tried to drag the cable. And he's like, how the hell am I supposed to do this? You know? Yeah. Well, That's his exact dialogue. He says, hell, because it's a kid show. Is how it's supposed to do this. Yeah. And then um, maybe at the end. They arrive back with the the ant army, and the actual queen ant comes out of the uh, the uh, the cave, and she's like, y- you could tell like maybe she's got ant subtitles, and it's like, where have you kids been? I've been looking all over for you, worried sick. I have, worried sick. And she goes up to um, Lily and just like gives her like a light a light smack on the back of the head and sends all of her kids back into the thing. It's like don't take somebody yeah. else's kids without permission, young lady. All right. Yeah hell are you doing don't take my pokemon yeah they're mine they're my ground type pokemon yeah yeah uh, so another episode another idea. episode exciting yeah. uh the whole crew is using an old flashlight to attract the parents right so they're like it's it's dark outside they're like mm-hmm. stepping on the light stepping it off like jumping back and forth kind of like a seesaw in a way like, yeah. you know, trying to flash it back you know, on and off so that the parents, you know, would see it and notice. But it doesn't really work. Uh, the whole the whole gimmick is that, like, the parents don't even know their kids are gone, you know? Yeah, it's like, like whenever been he gone cuts for the months, parents, they're like, like, have you seen Lily? Ah, I think she's at Toby's house. Yeah, yeah. And then they, you know, they if they see Toby's parents, she's like, oh, no, I think they're at Chet's house. And it's always yeah. just back and forth, right? Yeah, of course. It's very much like, oh, you know, parents, they don't know where their kids are. But it's not like today where, you know, parents are, they care about their kids. It's like, you know, the 50s or something where parents yeah. are like, ah, you know, well, our kids. Parents do don't thing. care about their children in the 50s. Come on. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, that's where it is in like TV and stuff. But yeah, you know, that's that's kind of what we're They're going They're probably for, locked in a refrigerator in a, in a in somewhere. You know, who cares? Yeah, they'll be, be fine. fine. If a nuke drops, they'll be all right. Yeah. Just Maybe it's like it was the cart. first day of summer vacation, too. And mm-hmm. the parents are like, they always disappear for weeks when on summer vacation. You're like, you know, they're always going between one house to the next. Mm-hmm. I barely ever see them. Thank God. Maybe we have like a whole bunch of adult jokes, you know? You know how TV shows will do that. Kids yeah. shows will have like, oh, the parents, they're having a key party, you know? And the pineapple's out or whatever. Like, it's like, oh, these parents are swingers. That's why they're all friends, because their parents are all getting together and kissing. Yeah. Yeah, or whatever. We have that uh, in the background. It's it's subtly implied. Mm-hmm. Throughout the entire show. So, right? So they're trying to, you know, attract the parents. They fail um, and get attacked by moths, because it's nighttime flashlight. Yeah. Um, and they get separated. Um, and, like, you know, they're... they're 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 fighting the moths and they're like, oh, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna handle this? And they go to like the bug zapper, um, and the bug zapper is like, you know, how they take down the moths because they're like, you know, run right. It's like a fallen bug zapper and they have to like plug it in. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe this is how we can get uh, Toby's like ant stuff sort of back into it. So he gets separated in, into the ant hill. Oh, I was and... thinking Toby could have like a a Batman style uh, story in this. Oh or my he's God. like it's Mothman. Yeah, it's Mothman, and he like at the beginning he's like he gets in front of the flashlight and does like a moth signal, you know, oh as my like God. a joke. Yeah. And everyone's like, "Haha, that's funny, Toby." And then they all get separated, and and Toby's like, "I need to let them know I'm coming." And he gets like moth wings, and he gets a moth helmet on, and he like gets in front of the signal to let them know he's yeah. on his way, you know. And he flies up, and he's he's gliding. He's fighting through. all the moths, yeah. 
throw and moth orangs <laughs> and all this shit. Ends up getting zapped by the bug zapper. Yeah. Because he gets uh, so into the role that he dives into it. Yeah. And he's just, you know, he does that cartoon thing where he's just like all of his skin gets all black and sooty. And he's like, yeah. his hair gets frizzy. He's like, it I would think be I'm cool too if uh, this episode, like the animation style for his parts in Mothman, was very comic book style. Yeah. You know what I mean? That would be good. Like, highly I, I'd saturated. imagine the rest of it kind of sort of clay like. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. But that should be like very comic book style, like. Cell shaded. You know? Highly yeah. saturated. I like that. That's good. Mothman. I think that's a hero. I think that's already a thing, Mothman. I mean, there's Killer Moth. He's I think a, there is he's a Mothman, a though. There probably is. Is it in the tick? I'm looking it up while you tell the rest of the episode. So, yeah, the Bug Zapper. That's how they do it. And, you know, they, they decide they need to go to Dr. Heinz Bugle's house, right? And, mm-hmm. uh,. So yeah, so they they have to get to Dr. Heinz Bugle's house to to, to to get the shrink ray in because their parents are never gonna notice, right? That's their whole problem. Um, may also uh, with the with the moth thing with uh, Toby, I actually just realized I had written down that he gets eaten by a moth and has to like crawl, his, like has to rip his way out. You know? Oh my god, yes! So, so that gory. could be like a great sort of like baptism of Moth Man. You know, yeah. like that's how he gets his beginning um his his wings and his helmet is the is the moth also i found it mothman was a a superhero in the watchman universe and uh, also there is of course the mothman the famous mothman from west virginian uh folklore right he's like uh, a cryptid why don't we just call him the moth then yeah the moth um so yeah so also i think violence would be okay in this because if we do do the clay style you know what i mean like then it's Mm -hmm. we just we can sort of make it so that like when something does die it just sort of gets melded into other stuff you know what i mean yeah so there's no there's no blood and stuff when you kill the ant when when chet kills an ant you know it's like like hits it with a bat or something its head just sort of gets stuck on the wall you know Mm because it's all clay everything's clay so we could have some weird sort of like world physics like that Mm-hmm. Physics get it gets weird when you're that small. Maybe they're like yeah. live action when, when we don't it's... need to explain it. it's a good show, you know? No, of course not. Yeah. Alright, so now like the rest of the show is like the journey to Dr. Heisenbugel's house. And we have diversions and stuff, like mm-hmm. you know, they're they're trying to get out of the backyard. Dr. Heisenbugel's backyard is probably like really well kempt and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um He's got a bunch of machines like, that are mowing the lawns. Like, he's invented a bunch of robots to mow the lawn for him. Yeah, you gotta, like, avoid that. Um, maybe at some point they have to get across pavement, and that's, like, a, you know, that's, like, hell. Because, you know, it's just no, there's no, uh... No shade, no... No shade, it's so hot. You know, it's really dangerous, because maybe he has a dog or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'd be a good threat, a big, big dog. Big it's dog. Like a, but it's a really small dog. It's like a chihuahua or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe Heinz has has equipped his dog with, like, m- glasses, like magnifying glasses, so he can see yeah. the kids. Yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe he could how would they turn that him. on the dog? That'd be interesting. Like he has like magnifying goggles or something. Maybe the dog also has night vision at night too, right? Yeah. And they the kids uh, moth like because you can blind a flashlight in their face. Yeah, like shines it right into his face. Boom, mm-hmm. gets him. Like, that's how they shock the dog. Yeah. They will have a whole thing, like, you know, with them inside. Because that changes the whole landscape once they get inside, obviously. Because we go from, like, a backyard show to, like, inside but small. And there's, like, you know, they got to get, you know, food from the fridge and the snack drawer. And, like, you mm-hmm. know, they got to travel across these big rooms to get to his laboratory. Um, I always the like... Upstairs. It's really hard for them to get up the steps, maybe. And they got to... Yeah. They build a grappling It's like climbing hook. a like mountain, you know. It's like yeah. That's like the climbing a mountain scene in like a any sort of adventure movie. Mm-hmm. Or like you know, they got the ice picks or something like that. Like they have. Uh, but it's you know, it's like nails the or something. Nails or or uh, the the uh, pointy parts of a a praying mantis. You know, their arms where they're like they yeah. they're sharp. Use that. I always like in these shows and like any piece of media where people are really small or animals are really small but they're smart 
where they have like all their you know modern stuff but it's it's you know made out of trash and garbage and stuff like yeah when when they have a sword but it's you know a, a pin right they use it as mm-hmm. a sword i always like i always like that stuff so i like that too we're gonna have all that stuff it's gonna be great yeah chet's gonna have a sword on him at all times maybe lily will have a cloak made out of butterfly wings because she's the mm-hmm. bug whisperer you know isla's got something kind of advanced because she's the smarter kid like she's got some sort of like uh she's got the big glasses and she's got like separate lenses that can slip in loaded. front of them yeah she's got some sort of like sp- like a maybe she took a pen right Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if a pen, pen might be too big. Or she took a, like the small spring in the pen, right? And yeah. she used it to make some sort of like launcher thing that shoots something. I, mm-hmm. I, I remember this. There's one game that uses like a that uses like shoots like a. They made a gun that shoots matches. So maybe she's shooting matches with like a a, a pen spring. Like a she big makes, like, like little gun. Maybe it's like in Fallout when you have a fat man, it just goes yeah, over her it's shoulder. Like a big RPG and she thing. Ka-dunksh you know fires the match and it like lights as it shoots you know mm-hmm. it's got the striking strip inside because she's the yeah. smartest one so she built the most technically advanced stuff yeah i like it yeah yeah i like this show so that's the whole thing the season journey to dr uh heinz and Do- bugle's house um where they'll eventually get unshrunk you know they'll defeat dr heinz and bugle essentially yeah just by like button, pestering him you yeah. know chet will like, like stab no, him in the toe with a, it's like a massive his... boss battle like he's they're, they're all around him shooting him mm-hmm. with different stuff uh to distract him until they you know get big again yeah and um it's like a dark souls boss and they're all just like hitting him in the, the back of the leg when, the when they get unshrunk they're like you know instantly like oh yeah well we're we're gonna tell your parents i can't believe you do this and their parents are like what are you doing at dr heidi beagle's house what i mean and they're like apologizing for the kids like i can't believe our kids were doing this like we're so sorry and mm-hmm. the kids are like no but he shrunk us oh my god don't say something ridiculous like that that's ridiculous don't say you're sorry to mr heinz and bugle and we'll be on our way i'm so sorry you know neighbor and they you know they bring all the kids back home and parents don't yeah. them and all didn't even notice they were gone and and Lily looks out the the window, or maybe they're all sitting in the in the front room, and they look out the window. They look up at at Heinz's workshop, and he's and he's looking down at them, and he just gives yeah. a devious smile and a wave. And he mm-hmm. shuts the curtain, and like uh, we cut to him inside, and he's working on you know Shrink Ray Mach Two or something. Yeah, and he's maybe we have a post credit scene where he's collected all of their like little inventions and stuff. Yeah. And puts them in a special box. So he's got the Mothman costume, the butterfly suit, the, the oh, sword and yeah. stuff, the big launcher, you know. And it's like, whoa, mm-hmm. season two, they're going to get all this stuff back when I shrink yeah, them again. Yeah, they fight in an arena or something. Yeah, make all these kids Bite murder each other. Coliseum. That could be fun. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. Um, I'm just trying to think of other episode ideas. And I'm like, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe because at this point toby is kind of my my main character in this show he's the one who he's always going off on his own and getting into all sorts of adventures and maybe he joins the roly polies and like he he becomes one with them and he begins rolling you know and then he's all the other roller, guys yeah he's got like a little yeah. like shell thing that helps him roll Mm-hmm. and all the other guys they get like stuck in some sort of uh oh no we're you know it's a, it, it's a drought Right, there's been a drought, and we're all, you know, dying of thirst. We need to find water somewhere, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, they on their search for water, they they find nothing. And then Toby, you know, gets stuck with the Roly Polies, and eventually, you know, becomes one of them. And then, you know, the stampede of Roly Polies comes by. Toby gets up. He's like, "Quick, hop on!" And they all like run. You know how like log runners run on a log, or like you run on a barrel as it's yeah. moving. They do that to like a, a, a puddle and they all find water and it's like yeah water good for us go back to uh the uh sandbox and it's like yeah lily buried you know an action a, a power rangers action playset there and if we find the action playset, that, that there's batteries in it maybe the batteries could be used to you know i don't know start up the game boy again or or you know get the flashlight working again and then they mm-hmm. get to the Power Rangers action playset, and they all like equip themselves with Power Rangers weaponry. 
and like they yeah. all get the helmets on and everything. It's like, all right, Power That'd Rangers. That'd be really go. cool to have like little action figure clothing on them. Mm-hmm. And then they like, just uh, like because they're probably about the size of a Lego man, right? So they could yeah. wear like Lego man stuff. They could have. They Lego could wear man Lego weapons. man, Lego man weapons, Lego man hat. You know, and they have mm-hmm. to fight off the sand mites, but uh, you know, eventually they become one with the sand mites. It's like the worms and Dune, and they just ride them through the deserts. Yeah, that could be it. That sounds good. I like this show. Bite sized. Bite sized. Yeah. Bite-sized. Uh, it's fun, you know? Yeah, it's fun. Shorter episode than normal, but that's okay. Eh, 46 minutes. Not too short. Yeah, not We've too short. We've got a couple of long ones, you know? Yeah, we have. We some recently. shorter ones. Bounce it out, because to be honest, I, no, no one wants to listen. I don't even want to listen to me this long. It kind of sucks. It's hard. Yeah. You know? I've been yeah. doing it for 20-something years. 20-something 20 years, years now. I don't know. Enough Something. years. Something. Enough. Too many years. People don't need to know how old you are. People don't need to know how old I am. 42. Exactly. I was going to say 46, but 42, yes, you're right. Yeah. 42. And you just hit 60, didn't you? Yeah. It's good. I, I went to ask you, how, how was the uh, the 1970s? It was nice. It was lots of um, lots of key parties, like we said. Okay. You know, yeah. you know how it was. I wasn't this, invited this, to uh, anything when I was an infant. This but, show you know. is based off your childhood, right? Yeah. You got shrunk in the 70s as a I kid. remember back in the day, I was living in, you know, the attic of a friend's house, and I was building my shrink ray. And yep. I, I decided, you know what? Fuck these kids. And I shrunk them. And <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. they didn't they didn't make it. I was implying you were one of the kids, but I see you, you were actually the monster. Yeah, I was the I bad did. guy. I shrunk oh. all those kids, and now they're all dead. Dr. Heinz and Bugle, everyone. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to the Various Well Pilots podcast. I've been your host, Charles Lung. With me has always been my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, gunner, navigator, and orator, Jacob Gloth. If you like what you heard here and you want to hear more, please give us a like, follow, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your dog, tell your cat. And don't forget, we will be here next week with a brand new televisual series for you to imagine. Yeah. As we are every week. Yep. And next week, episode so we 150. And you know what that means? We're gonna off the cry. top of the dome, baby. Uh, off the top of the dome. Are we supposed to do dome. something special for 150? I think about it. Oh, jeez. You know, maybe we should play oh, on this. <laughs> oh, nah. God. Nah. That's it's okay. Good. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah, who cares? Maybe, we'll do something uh, maybe Ivan Illich will be in it. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Oh. Oh. All right. Goodbye. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, goodbye. It's not Isaac Illich, I think. Uh, Ivan Illich yeah. is the one we, is the dude from the thing we stole. Yeah, Isaac Illich is the, yeah. <laughs>